We are walking. Aha! Ooh. We are wobbling. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We are tiptoeing. And we are exploring. Oh, wow! Oh! Ooh, stem is everywhere. Everywhere we go, there's a little bit of science, technology, engineering, Whoa. and math hiding around us. Huh. Can you guess what we'll find today? So grab your shoes, grab your binoculars. It's time for our <laughs> STEM adventures to... Ta-da! The Jurassic World Experience at Gardens by the Bay. Whoa! A place filled with giants from the past. That's right, Cock Fifi. Let's start our science adventure. This exhibition is held inside the Cloud Forest Conservatory. This is intentional because the cool, misty environment and the diverse plant life of over 72,000 plants perfectly replicate the tropical montane regions where many ancient plants would have existed. Today, we are going to learn about the incredible diversity of living things. Even though they've been extinct for millions of years, dinosaurs are a perfect way to understand how animals are different and how we can classify them. Whoa! Yippee! I can't wait! Come on, friends! Let's go! Oh, and parents, this exhibition is free for all children under three years old. Ooh, Mimi, it looks like we've left the books behind and traveled millions of years back in time. I can't wait to see the different types of dinosaurs. I heard that we can spot the Brachiosaurus, the Comsognathus, baby dinosaurs, and even the Velociraptor here. Ooh, look over here, Mimi. This small but mighty dinosaur is called a Stigmolock. What do you notice about its head? Wow! Its head is like it's wearing a helmet! It has sharp spikes! That's right, Mimi! Its name even means Demon from the River Styx because of that spiky, bony dome on its head. Now, scientists think it used that hard skull for headbutting matches with its rival or to protect itself. Woo! Now, Mimi, the first way we can classify animals is by what they eat. Nyum, 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 nyum. These dinosaurs only ate plants, which makes them herbivores. They munch on leaves with its serrated teeth. But sometimes, they would eat bugs too. The Stigmolock is a perfect example of how different animals are. This dinosaur eats plants, and even though it was a small dinosaur, its unique spiky head was a special adaptation that helped it to survive. Let's continue on our Jurassic walk, Mimi. <laughs> it's so misty. 
these frosty blue streamers lead us into the magical crystal mountain. It isn't just a garden, it's a giant computer screen. This is where technology meets biology. When we walk, we leave little puddles on the floor. Wow, that looks just like the truck in the movies. Friends, did you know that the dinosaurs here can actually move? They are advanced animatronics or robots that move just like how actual dinosaurs would. Wow! Look! This floor has motion sensors and the walls use projection mapping to detect our movements. We can activate motion art here. Art that moves. How cool! Oh my goodness, Mimi! Look at this giant! This is the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex, also commonly known as the T-Rex. It had huge, sharp teeth, perfect for tearing meat. This makes the T-Rex a carnivore. Wow, its teeth are so sharp! Carnivore means a meat eater. Right, Cock Fifi? Exactly. So remember, we can classify animals as either carnivores, which are meat eaters, or herbivores, which are plant eaters. Now, there are also animals which are omnivores. These are animals that eat both meat and plants. Over 50 species of plants in this cloud forest can trace their lineage back to the Jurassic period. These include ferns and conifers that herbivore dinosaurs like the Brachiosaurus would have eaten. Wow! Oh, this misty environment is similar to what the dinosaurs lived in during the Jurassic period. We can pretend that we are actually in the same period as them. Herbivores eat plants. Carnivores eat meat. Omnivores eat plants and meat. Mimi, don't blink! These are tiny comsognathus. They were only the size of a chicken, but they were super duper fast! Wow!
These tiny dinos were carnivores and they ate small, quick animals that they can easily catch and fit into their mouths, like lizards and insects. Another way we can classify animals is by their unique body features. These body features are not just for show, they have very important functions. These functions and body features are called adaptations that help them to survive. Brachiosaurus has a super long neck! Do you know why? Its long neck helped it reach the tall leaves and branches on trees, so it wouldn't have to compete for food with other, shorter dinosaurs. Oh, that's why it could eat the tall leaves. How smart! Oh, Mimi and friends, look at that incredibly long tail. This tail acts as a counterbalance, helping the Brachiosaurus stay balanced while stretching its neck high up to reach its food. So, we can also classify animals by looking at their unique external features and how those features help them live. The Evolution Walk is unique to the Singapore exhibit. It allows visitors to journey further back in time, even before the dinosaurs. We can learn how plant life evolved and what extinct prehistoric flora looked like. Wow! Breathe in all that fresh air, Mimi! Wow! Da-da-da! That is the world's largest waterfall, standing at 35 meters. Wow, look at all these eggs! Hmm, they look similar to the eggs that chickens lay today. They have to stay warm so that the baby dinosaur inside can grow, grow, grow. Oh, so dinosaurs started from eggs too? So cute! Yes, it's so cute! You're right, Mimi. All animals go through different stages of life, and this is called a life cycle. For dinosaurs, the life cycle starts in an egg. When the baby dinosaur is big enough, it will break out of its shell. We call that hatching. And look, after it hatches, it's a tiny baby dinosaur. Just like the ones in these incubators!
This is a key part of the dinosaur's life cycle, from an egg to a baby. And it's not just dinosaurs. Many animals like birds or even crocodiles start their lives by hatching from an egg. We have a life cycle too, right, Cock Fifi? Except we don't come out of an egg. The Cloud Mountain is covered in plants called epiphytes, like orchids and ferns. These plants don't grow in soil. They get their water and food directly from the moist air and mist that is created by that very tall waterfall. And friends, if you're ever feeling hot in sunny Singapore, this cloud forest is the perfect place to chill. The temperature here is kept at a comfortable 23 to 25 degrees Celsius all year round. So you will always feel like you are in the tropical highlands. Wow, what an amazing walkabout, Mimi and friends! We learned so much today. We discovered how to classify dinosaurs and other animals as carnivores, herbivores, or omnivores based on what they eat. <laughs> True. We also learned why their bodies are unique. Some have long necks to eat leaves, and some have spikes to protect themselves. Exactly! We saw how their unique bodies help them survive. And finally, we learned about the life cycles of dinosaurs, which started from tiny, tiny eggs before they became the giants that we see here today. Now friends, da -da -da -da, it's time for our final STEM mission. Now look at the dinosaur in this picture. What are some unique body features that help it survive? Tell us your answer in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more science adventures with us! Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Jumpa, Jumpa lagi! lagi.